got a big update for you in the Kanye for President campaign. Um, okay, so he talked again to Forbes and updated some of his previous comments that he had made or expanded. Let's throw the headline up here for what he said. So here's the way Forbes classified it. Kanye West indicates that his spoiler campaign is indeed designed to hurt Biden. So, okay, that's how they characterized it. What he actually said was a little bit less like direct than the headline is, which look, I mean, yeah, people write clicky headlines. But so essentially what he said was that when he was asked about his motivation for his 2020 ambitions and they pointed out basically like, look, you can't get on the ballot. You can't get to 270. You can't win. You can only do damage to um, to Biden. Potentially, he said that he was walking rather than running for president, whatever that means. <laughs> but these are the comments that really sort of. Um, I guess, caused them to characterize it in the headline as they did when he was confronted with that fact that he couldn't get to 270 and that his effort would only serve as a Biden spoiler. West reportedly, and this was all by text, texted back, I'm not going to argue with you. When pressed on that again about hurting Biden's campaign, he said, I'm not denying it. I just told you. So that's where we are. Yeah, I mean, are there indications that he intends this to be a spoiler campaign? I guess. I think the, the biggest indication, other than this text message, which I actually think is pretty vague, would it's be vague. Yeah, that he hasn't really come out hard against Donald Trump, who he's been an ardent supporter of. And so if he was so motivated to run a presidential campaign, you'd think that he would be out there saying we, you know, why he's running against the sitting president, who he's been a longtime supporter of. So I think in that way, it's indicative. But I also think you know, he's struggling right now clearly with mental illness, and that's sad, and his wife has indicated as much. We know He's talked about it in the past. So I actually think that as the chattering class and politicos try to put some sort of logical framework on this as we do off yeah. in D.C., it's actually, I, I have no idea what's going on, and I don't think there is any clear sense of what's going on. Well, and that's the thing, too, and why it kind of annoys me that the headline is a little bit misleading or goes a little bit beyond what he said directly. I mean, they, first of all, clearly the tenor of the text messages was trying to get him to say exactly this. Yes. Like, aren't you a spoiler? Totally. You can't get to 270. Tell me you're a spoiler. And so eventually he says something that's kind of like, yeah, I mean, I'm not denying it. And they're like, yes, we got the headline that we wanted. And from the beginning, the sort of, you know, the resistance Democrats who still blame Jill Stein and Susan <laughs> Sarandon for Donald Trump's victory, right? They saw this as like another grand plot right? where the real explanation is probably a lot closer to what you just said. This is someone who's struggling with mental illness. He came up with this idea. He's launched this crazy thing that makes no sense. He gave ins an insane interview also to Forbes where he touched all kinds of topics and said that like the COVID vaccine was going to be the mark of the beast. And I think it was what it was he said. And um, and you're right. He was reluctant. He is a little bit critical of Trump. He's reluctant to criticize Trump much more aggressively against Biden. And, and I get it. And there is something to you put a really famous name on a ballot and there's some percent of people who are just like, oh, oh yeah. it'd be cool to vote for Kanye, you know. But if your candidate is so vulnerable and weak that you're worried about a mentally ill star who is struggling to even get his name, the number of signatures he needs to even get on the ballot in states across the country. Like, if that's how weak and precarious your position is, then maybe you should assess what's going on with your candidate. Right, and Washington and the political sphere has no real way to understand Kanye West because what he is is this kind of brilliant, brilliant creative, out-of-the-box thinker, and he has a ton of money and a ton of fame. So what's he, and he's political, so what's he gonna do with that? He's going to channel it into some sort of like creative, out-of-the-box, political campaign that right. makes no sense as DC understands the political logic. And I, you know, I don't think it makes much sense, but you know, in, especially in this environment, I mean, if he wanted to mount a sort of Trump style campaign in 2024, that's a different thing. But I, I just don't think there's any real way to understand what Kanye West is doing. Even by talking to Kanye West, you don't get a clear sense of what he's doing. And that's what the Forbes article really underscores. Yes. Yes. Very well said. And I mean, the other piece of this that I don't want to leave out is that apparently some no Republican operatives are trying to help him <laughs> out. So I'm not saying that there's nothing like nefarious here coming from that side of like, maybe we can siphon off some votes here or there. But I just always hate this instinct to come up with the excuse for why you're going to lose. And everybody's like, oh, this is the new Jill Stein. This is going to cost us the election again, et cetera, et cetera. Like looking for those narratives of excuses. 
And again, if your candidate is so weak that they can't handle something like this, then you've got bigger problems. But rather than ever do any reflection on that, I remember Maggie Haberman went on CNN. Did you follow this? And she was like, Biden is a flawed candidate. And people melted down. Yeah. It's like, this is just abundantly, obviously clear. But you're not even allowed to say that. So you can't criticize him. So you have to figure out all these other potential excuses so that if he loses and Donald Trump gets reelected again, once again, you don't have to do any like self reflection or reflection on the failed project of neoliberalism, you can just conveniently blame Kanye West instead. Yes, it's a scapegoat. And, you know, rest easy, neoliberal Democrats. Kanye West is not going to cost you the election. I mean, the margins are this, especially in these swing states where Republican, offer, uh, Republican operatives are reportedly offering to help him out. Those are going to be slim margins. And with somebody like Kanye West, frankly, I have no idea how he would impact the vote. And I think it is ridiculous for anybody to suggest unless they've seen, you know, focus group numbers or polling numbers, how he would actually impact the race in those states. Because, I mean, you can also have people who wouldn't have voted otherwise voting for Kanye West. I really have no idea how his support would break down. And to suggest that he would just automatically throw the election to Trump, I think, is ridiculously naive. Well, there's also a lot of hypocrisy here, because you'll recall last time around, while they hate, hated and continue to hate Jill Stein with every fiber of their being, um, Evan McMullen was a hero. Right? <laughs> Yeah, on the really other side, it's like, oh my God, what a patriot. Mullen. Like, yes. You know, so I mean, this is never applied consistently. But anyway, they got somewhat of the answer they wanted out of Kanye. So there you go. Um, Emily, thank you. Of it's course. been great having you. You've yes. done a phenomenal job. Thank you for having me. Again, I feel like I'm warping into Sagar and it's an uncomfortable feeling, but <laughs> I'm learning a lot in his shoes. Well, it is, I have to say, when you first came in this week, I was like, I get to see so few like new people just to be like physically present <laughs> with another human being. I was like, this is so exciting. But no, we really enjoyed having you. Um, thank you so much for that. Sagar will be back next week and next week on Rising. We're also going to have friend of the show, Zed Jelani. He'll be here to share his normal brilliance. Jim Tankersley is going to talk about his new book, The Riches of This Land. And as I said, Sarah will be back from his travels. We hope you have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy everything. We're going to have some content up for you this weekend as well. Please like and share this video. It really does help others to find us. Also subscribe so that you never miss a video. You would never want that to happen. Make sure to watch for Rise and Cues, the week and other great weekend content. Have a great day. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. See you back here on Monday.